Hey guys, Sports Gaming Fever here back again. Um, this time with another deck tech. So in that last video, if you watched, you saw that I uh, opened some cards for this new deck that I got from Star City Games. And so here is the completed deck. So let's start with the land base. So this is a blue-black zombie deck. Um, obviously I've never played it yet, so I don't really know what to expect how it's going to play out. But um, the general strategy is to put out your super good zombies, which are like one mana, two mana. And then with other creatures, you're going to be able to make them bigger and better so that your opponents can't get rid of them. And if they do, you can bring them back. Um, so yeah, here's the uh, land base. So, Watery Grave. Uh, it's the only shock I have. Only rare land I have so far. I'm going to be trading for other ones, don't worry. So don't tell me, oh, you need Drowned Catacombs. Oh, you need um, some more Watery Graves. I'm working on that. I didn't want to pay money for those because those are actually kind of a lot of money. So um, I'm working on other trades. I got this one through a trade. So I'm working on other trades in order to get them. Anyway, then from there on, I play 13 Swamps as of now. Of course, when I get more rare lands... That'll change, so there's 13 Swamps. And 8 Islands. So that sells it for the land base. Um, yeah, so pretty simple. More black than blue, obviously, as I have more black cards than blue cards in this deck. So, I mean, if I, only, if I get one or two Islands out there, I'm set for the game, really. So that's why I only need 8 of them. Whereas, I'm going to need more swamps. Especially when we get into these creatures that you're about to see. So I have uh, four. I play a playset of Gravecrawler Foil 1, 2 that I just bought. Which is very nice. Cost me a couple extra bucks, but you know what? That's okay. They're Gravecrawlers. That's nice. And uh, if I ever take apart this deck, this card will probably be worth even more money than it is right now, hopefully. Alright. So there's your Gravecrawlers. Next we have four Diagraph Ghouls, so a playset. These are good because, oh, something I should mention about the Grave Crawlers, if you don't know, they can't block, but if you can control if you control a zombie, you can cast it from your graveyard, which is pretty nice. Diagraph Ghouls, one drop, two, two, um, and they enter the battlefield tapped, which doesn't really matter if you're playing first. So if you play first, and uh, this could be your turn one, get a two, two out there. Which is very nice on turn two, being able to attack. Very, very nice. And even if um, you don't play first, if you don't go first, you can still get it out there your first turn. And even though it's tapped and they might get a creature in if they play one, then you're still set. Um, which is pretty nice. Next, we, ha we play a play set of Giraffe's Messenger. So, he's cool. Three black, which is kind of strict on... Uh, Mana, but that's okay. Um, it enters the battlefield tapped, um, which is another downside. But when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two life and has undying. So it will come back. And it's a 3 2 for 3. So you kind of get your in it pings for 2. So um, it coming in tapped is pretty much worth it in this case. So very good zombie. If you're making a zombie deck and trying to be competitive, I'd say you need these cards. Like, not necessarily play sets, but you do need to play these cards if you want a very competitive um, deck if you're not playing kitchen table. Uh, the thing is, I kind of play casual, but I also like to have a competitive casual deck. Um, kind of weird. I don't really tr keep things within standard, but I still um, try to keep them competitive. So, next we have a Cemetery Reaper. I play two. So, um, two Cemetery Reaper. Other zombie creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Pay 2 mana, exile target creature from a graveyard, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token on the battlefield. We might not be using that ability as much, but it's a 2-2 two -two for 3 with uh, giving other zombies plus 1 plus 1, which is why it's good, and that's why I play it. Um, yeah, it's a very good card, so that's what I'm talking about, growing our uh, zombies so our opponents can't deal with them. Again, talking about that, we have 2 death baron skeleton creatures you control, and other zombie creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have death touch. Which is huge. This can just like make your opponents just scared. Uh, rightly, they should, because you know zombies. Um, also, I'd like to mention these cool sleeves I got from Star City Games. If uh, you didn't see my last video, 
I just thought it was cool making a zombie dick. Why not get some nice sleeves? Um, whenever I make a competitive deck, I try to get cool sleeves for them. Like my uh, Slesnia Populate deck has green sleeves. If you saw that deck, deck. if not, check out my channel. But um, anyway, without further ado, one Unbreathing Horde. I just play one. I could have easily gotten another one, but um, Breathing Horde enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each zombie creature you control and each zombie card in your graveyard. If Unbreathing Horde would be dealt damage, prevent that damage, and remove a plus one, plus one counter from it. So the reason I'm going to play one of this is it's kind of, um, it's kind of, kind of, uh, situational, I guess. Because if you get this in your opening hand, then it's kind of sitting there, and if you play, like, a playset or two or three, you don't want a couple of these sitting in your hand, or one or two even. Even one would be enough sitting in your hand, so, uh... That's why I only play one. If it works out, obviously I can add this deck in. This card's only worth like 50 cents to a dollar, so I can easily buy one or trade for one. Um, next we play two, Macassi Unhallowed. Um, Intimidate. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. So that's as good against, obviously, human decks. Um, I should have a buddy who plays a human deck, so he won't be too happy. Um, other non-human creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Undying. And I don't play any humans. I do play a couple non-zombies, as you'll see with the next card that I reveal, but he's very good, and he's a 5-5 five, five for 6, and does all that, that's why he's a mech, mythic, and he's a legendary creature, but that's okay, if we don't get one, or if one dies, which I don't know how he'd, uh, how'd he die, um, but yeah, so I'm dying pretty sweet, so if I'm playing against someone who's not playing black, they're kind of screwed, um, if I get him out there, because I'm just going to keep getting in uh, for 5. Next we have two health caretaker, one in Italian, which is kind of a weird language to have a magic card, I guess, but, and I like the different art and all. But sac tap, sac sacrifice a creature, return target creature card from your graveyard to play, play this ability only during your upkeep. So what's really cool about this is, um, you tap, say you sacrifice a grave crawler, if you have, and you bring someone else back, say you bring like a death baron back, right? Then you can just cast the Great Krell again <laughs> during your upkeep and it's I mean, it's back so that's why this, this card and that's why I played two four mana one one but its ability makes it so worth it I highly suggest playing this card if you're not playing in standard of course as it is obviously out of standard that's a pretty old card this one's ninth edition so uh, I don't even know what edition that's from so yeah pretty old card but a good one Oldie but a goodie. Um, next I play Place of Diagraph Captain. I do have two in Japanese. So, uh, Death Touch. Other zombie creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Which is good. And then whenever another zombie you control dies, target opponent loses one life. So that is huge as well. Uh, just it, making it hard for them to kill your zombies. Hard for them to kill your creatures. And also, if they do there is a penalty for killing your creatures. That's just, in my mind, that's pretty, pretty fantastic. I don't know about you guys. Um, next, Havenville Leech. Um, it's the last of the uh, creatures. So it's a 5-5-4, five, five, uh, I mean, it's a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. Um, you may cast, one mana, you may cast target creature card from a graveyard this turn. Um, when you... Cast that card this turn, Havenville Lich gains all active abilities of that card until end of turn. So, say so you cast some case the Unhallowed for whatever reason it's in your graveyard. From it, boom, you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you have all of you guys have. Oh, wait, it's probably not a good example. Say if you do Death Baron, that's better. Then he's a copy of Death Baron, so that means your creatures get plus two, plus two until end of turn, which is great, and that's why I play two. Um, I don't play four because I don't want to get stuck with a bunch of them in my hand um, and not be able to play them if I'm in a situation where I'm not getting mana. Um, next, we will move on to um, we will move on to other cards. So that's like sorceries, instants. Um, I don't believe I have any enchantments. So um having difficulty picking up these cards doesn't matter i can put them in anywhere i'm just gonna sweep them into my hand 
Um, it doesn't matter the order. I'm not gonna be re-recording a deck deck, I don't believe, unless something goes horribly wrong in like two seconds. Um, yeah, Baron Cemetery. Okay, next, other spells. So, I have two murder. So, destroy target creature, one's in Chinese. I like foreign cards, what can I say? So, destroy target creature at instant speed for three mana. Very nice. Um, alongside with that, I do play two Doomblade. And the thing with Doomblade is, and the reason I play Murders, is because it's just two mana, which is great, instant speed, which is fantastic, but it only destroys target non-black creatures. So if I'm in a situation where I'm facing black creatures, then of course I need my murders, so that's why I play two of each. I hope that makes sense. Then I play a foil. Woo! A zombie apocalypse. So six mana. Return all zombie creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped. Then destroy all humans. Just, just like randomly, just destroy all humans, <laughs> which is great if you're facing humans. Um, two cyclonic rift. So, so for two mana. I can return target non-land permanent, not, not just creature, just permanent, you don't control to its owner's hand, which is pretty great, and the art on that is fantastic, but it's overload, you may cast this spell for its overload cost if you do change its text by replacing the instances of target with each, so return each non-land permanent, uh, you don't control to its owner's hand, <laughs> kind of a board sweep. Um, but only for your opponent, which is why it's so great, and that's why people play it. Wonder why people play cards that aren't great. Um, then we have a playset of Brainstorm. So, one mana, draw three cards, then put any two cards from your hand on top of your library. So basically, it's one mana, draw a card, but, um, like, it does that, which is pretty fantastic on its own. If it was just that, I'd play it. But you get to... Um, organize your next three turns, which is just great. And if you have something in your hand and you can't play it, and you'd rather something else in your hand, that's great. So say you get stuck with a Havenville Lich in your opening hand and you have a Brainstorm, just put that down in the bomb. Or if you're looking for lands and you're getting land, uh, if you only have like an island or whatever out there and you can't play your good cards, and you need to get to your lands fast, play one of these, hope one's there, and then get it into your hand and play it. And it's an instant speed, so do it at the end of your opponent's turn. Anyway, guys, that's this deck tech. Um, don't have a name for this deck yet. I usually name my decks. So um, if you guys have a good name for it, let me know in the comments below. And I'm still working on it, so uh, hopefully going to get some trades done soon, possibly within the YouTube community. I don't know. I have never done that before. But, guys, um, thanks for watching, and have a good one. Bye.